Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for Pink Fresh Studio. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am sharing this gorgeous fall themed thank you card that I am creating with a mix of older and newer products. And I have been seeing so many people use this fall foliage stencil set and coordinating die. And the colors that they were using were absolutely gorgeous. And I thought I have to create something with that product. And so I'm gonna mix this, which is from the July 2022 release, with a little bit of product from the August 2022 release and then some older sentiments as well. We're gonna mix it all up and create something really beautiful today. So I am starting by placing my hammer mill cardstock into the corner of my Misty stamping tool. And then I'm adding my layering stencil number one right into that same corner. So I'm gonna make sure that every time I place a stencil into my Misty, that it is pushed securely into that lower right hand corner. And that's gonna make sure that all the stencils are gonna line up perfectly. Now you can see I'm kind of holding it in place with those two little magnets there. You can use your Misty magnet. I just had those on my work surface. And after I've added a very light layer of the ballet slipper ink, I'm going in with a really small detail blending brush. This one happens to be from Rabbit Hole Designs. And I'm just adding a little bit of the coral reef ink on the tips of the leaves to add a little bit more depth and dimension. Now you can also use a larger blending brush for this, but this gives me a little more control. And I tend to be a little bit like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> even when I craft. So if I can get a smaller brush brought in, it gives me a little more control and I tend not to go overboard with things. So once I added that detail in there, I went over with another light layer of the ballet slipper and you can see that is my first stencil there. Now I am moving on to stencil number two and stencil number two has some leaf bases, but it also has some detail areas for the previously blended leaves. So I'm gonna make sure that I blend the base of all of these leaves in that ballet slipper again, add the little depth with the coral reef. And then for these little areas of detail, I'm going in with a light layer of warm buff. So you can see that's stencil number two. Now I'm moving on to stencil number three. Now, same thing here. There are some leaf bases, and then there are also some areas of like the veining in the leaves, and that's what I'm using the warm buff for. Now, I didn't mask off these stencils to protect the, area, the various areas. I was just kind of careful when I went in with the various colors to make sure I only got it in the areas that I wanted it. But if you're more comfortable masking, you can use some post-its or some post-it tape to protect those areas while you bring in the different colors. Now, when I lifted up the stencil, I didn't feel like the warm buff was quite dark enough, so I replaced it back into the corner of the Misty, blended a little bit more, and I kind of kept checking my work because previously I had done this and I had gone way too heavy-handed with the warm buff and I did not like the results. So after I finished stencil number four with the ballet slipper and the coral reef, that's what that looked like, and then I repeated the same process. And for these darker pink leaves, I used coral reef and passion fruit. And then I created one with sweet mustard and marigold, one with peach fuzz and apricot. And those were the four colors that I used. Now you could definitely blend different leaves and different colors on this stencil while you're doing it, but I just wanted to have a bunch of leaves to play with. And now I have plenty of items to make future cards with as well. So now I'm just gonna die cut all of these leaves using the coordinating die. And I've held that in place over my stenciled objects with a little bit of removable tape. And I actually did mess up on the back of this one and just flipped it over and used the other side of the cardstock to create my leaves. So <laughs> if you see a little ink on the back of the leaves that I'm using, that's the reason why. You get two tries on every piece of cardstock. Now I am taking the elongated lattice. This is a brand new background die from Pink Fresh Studio and I die cut it using my impress machine. This gave me a really good die cut result. This is a very intricate die. So if you're having difficulty getting a clean die cut, you may wanna add a metal shim to your die cutting sandwich and try running it through twice. 
This is Nina Solar White Heavyweight cardstock, and I was able to get a beautiful die cut result. And I die cut that three times from this heavyweight cardstock because I'm gonna stack them up for some dimension. Now, once I had that lattice die cut, I am taking some various colors and stems of leaves and I'm tucking them into this lattice and I'm just kind of arranging my leaves and I'm just kind of going with my gut here. <laughs> I'm adding a little bit of yellow here and there. I've got my pinks and my peaches going. And once I have those kind of tucked where I want them, I'm gonna flip this over and start adding some liquid glue behind those stems to hold them in place. Now, I could have added the glue as I was adding these to the lattice, but I really wanted the ability to kind of move them around, make sure that I like them. And when I flipped this over, this big piece kind of moved. It's okay, the glue was still wet and so it dried fine and it's staying in place, I promise. I'm just putting the little dots of that Barely Art glue behind everything to hold it in place. And then I'm leaving the tips where I can kind of fold them and bend them up to give them a little more dimension. And then I'm gonna go through and add just a few more pieces here and there. I'm just really filling out kind of the swag design that I'm making, which is kind of like this arched L shape in that lower left-hand corner. So once I have everything glued in place, I'm gonna twist and turn and bend up those edges to give it a little bit of dimension. And then I am going to start stacking up my background dies. Now, this is a little tedious, I'm not gonna lie. You could use some sheet adhesive on the back of these die cuts, but honestly, there would be a lot of waste to that sheet adhesive because there's so much open area in this die. So I just bit the bullet and used some liquid glue. It didn't take that long. <laughs> and I just stacked them up. Now your other option would be not to add dimension at all, but that's not really an option for me. <laughs> so I just stacked them up. It just took a little bit of patience. So I added some liquid glue to the top of that two stack, and then I added my third die cut lattice on top, the one that has the leaves, and that finishes off my card front. Now I'm going to work on my card base. I have a piece of ivory cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11 inches, and I'm scoring it at five and a half inches to create a top folding A2 size card base. I'm gonna prep the surface of that card base with a little bit of powder tool, and now I've brought in my dainty plaid stamp from Pink Fresh Studio. This is also from the July 2022 release. I've inked it up with some Versamark ink, and I've grabbed my card base, flipped it over right onto that stamp as it was laying on my work surface, and now I'm just pressing all over that to make sure I transfer that Versamark ink to the cardstock. Now I'm gonna take this card base and I'm gonna add some white embossing powder. I absolutely love this dainty plaid pattern, white heat embossed on this ivory cardstock. I think it is so beautiful and it's gonna look really cool peeking out of that elongated lattice die cut background that I have. And once I get this all covered in the embossing powder, I'm gonna take my heat tool and I'm gonna heat set that and I'm keeping it moving to make sure I don't get too much warping. And I think you can kind of see the sheen of that dainty plaid on that ivory cardstock in that white embossing powder. Mm, it is, it's good stuff, y'all. <laughs> It's hard to capture it in the video and in the photos, but in real life, it just adds just that little bit of extra something. And I'm telling you, I just love the way it turned out. Now, the sentiment that I'm using today is from the scripted greetings die set from Pink Fresh Studio. I have die cut the shadow layer in some vellum, and then I've stacked up three layers of heavyweight white cardstock on the vellum, and then topped it off with the die cut layer of gold cardstock to create that greeting. And I've added it onto my card front using a little bit of foam adhesive. And I'm finishing this card off with the metallic gold pearls from Pink Fresh Studio kind of scattered throughout my swag. And that finishes off my fall themed thank you card. I think that this color palette is so beautiful for fall. And yes, pink can be fall because it is still a warm color. And when you mix it with some of these oranges and yellows and the really neutral tones of the ivory and the warm buff, I think it makes a fab fall color palette. <laughs> Now, as always, I will have links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. 
And I just want to thank you for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I am so glad you're here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here on this YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the paper crafting and card making video tutorials shared here. Be sure to leave me a comment below. Let me know what your favorite part about this card is. Share this video with a friend. I really appreciate you. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.